So what's going on guys? Episode number five. We're here at Petra. So a lot of you guys don't know, I'm actually one of the owners in this place. And today I'm going to have a co-owner with me. And this is a best friend. This is somebody that I've known for probably over a decade. And we came to Canada together. So we're going to share a lot of stories, a lot of things. We talked a lot about online businesses, you know, in other episodes. But in this, we're going to talk about different type of businesses and the success stories that we're having. So subscribe, like, and all the other stuff they say on social media. Welcome to Success After Dark Podcast. We are episode number five. I got my brother Vlad as a co-host. Vlad, what's up? And then we have what's a special up? we have a special guest today, man. Very special. Uh, this is uh, a decade, more than a decade. How many more years? Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen years together. Fifteen. Total so. Two thousand and eight, right? Yeah, something like that. We have Chef Ferris in the house. Yes. Yes. So we we never called him Chef Ferris. I don't know how this <laughs> chef came in. But I feel like we will discover that today. So me and Ferris have known of each other. Well, we, we met in, in, in um, grade six, seven. I believe. Six, six or seven. Yeah. Not, in, not in Canada, by the way. No, yeah. in Saudi Arabia. And um, yeah, man. He How'd you guys meet? Well, I'll tell you something. I, okay, I remember one thing yeah. because we were discussing this. Ferris used to have this Justin Bieber hair back in the days. Yeah. It may not look like it right it now. that haircut before I lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> It's a like Ferris this? had like this? No, no bro, no. like Justin like, Bieber Justin. No, no, straightened like, it. Yeah, Saints, yeah, bro. Yeah, baby, so he used to baby, have that baby. <laughs> cover, cover. So he used to have so much hair, he used to cover uh -huh. his ears, bro. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, uh, it was like the good old days, you know. Yeah. And What's then he cool? came, he came to our school because I was in the school already. So he came to our school. He came from another city in Saudi. He came from Jeddah, sah. Jeddah. And um, bro, it was interesting, man. We kind of kicked it off then. And then uh, yeah, I think I, saw I had her. the Justin hair too. Yeah, yeah? it worked. I, I can imagine. It worked. I can yeah. imagine. 100%. Vlad, it worked. You had yeah. the Justin hair too. He, to he never. Oh, I, know. Yeah, I think. No, no. You <laughs> tried, bro. You tried. Not the Justin. It yeah. didn't work out. <laughs> it, 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 we we had. A, it was a tr there was a trial and error there. <laughs> but um, so we we came to Can so we, uh, grade six, um, and then when did you leave <clears throat> our school? Because you went you you went. To I didn't leave. I got kicked out. Oh, nice. Very nice. Was it up to me? But I think grade nine. I went to another school, which was supposed to be more strict. It was our school? Which is what wisdom? Wisdom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I never went to wisdom. You no, went to wisdom. Yeah, and then we re met. We we like we stayed friends. We had the yeah. same group of friends. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we all those met. Yeah. And then we met again. In there you go. We met at Delta first. Delta. Delta, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I just remember that. I just remember the name of the school, yeah. right? And then he got kicked out first. I got kicked out second. Yeah. But he went to wisdom because that's. But wisdom is for like smart people. I oh, went to the yeah. education. Yeah. It was any, they were accepted at anybody at that point. Yeah. Right? Just and as long as you had money. And and we kind had the same of, circle because yeah. we played soccer together. Uh -huh, we were exactly. like on, on on one team the entire. When we always beat teams, right? we were young kids. Who was better? Uh, well, we played no, but we played different, different roles. Position. I was I was a no, you, a goalkeeper. You guys can he, tell me after. Yeah, I'll tell you after. <laughs> no, but he was he was he was always a defender. Defender. Yeah. So uh, you know, I used to be a goalkeeper. He's been like in front of me. Oh, nice. nice. I was but protecting his net. All the time. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. But then. So does outscore my own goals. <laughs> <laughs> they get so mad. I was that Have you ever scored guy. an own goal on him? Oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was that kind of guy. Either I play really good or really, really shit. I don't, I don't have, like, I can't play normal. Nothing in between. And then this guy would get so crazy that he would just stop passing the ball and he would just go all the way from <laughs> our goalkeeper to the other team. And he would not even look left and right. Oh, and he bro. would be so mad. You can, like, see. Upset. Like, his face would be so red going <laughs> forward. I was like, what the fuck does this guy have want? Like, be honest, have you ever scored going net to I net? Think a couple yeah, times. Yeah, a couple, couple times. times. Come on, bro. Give me some credit. Against, against the full team? Yes, the bro. Full team, yeah. I was, listen, I was a speedy at that yeah. point. I, did, I never smoked. I never, they, because yeah. they smoked shisha from when we were young, young. Uh -huh. Like, when did you start smoking shisha? I started, uh... 10 years now, 10, 11 years. But I, I, I never I never smoked up yeah. until, not even I came to Canada, like, I never smoked up until, like, later on when we came yeah, to Canada. Yeah, probably. Like, yeah, even when we were at the shisha days. bar, I never smoked, yeah, like, like that. We smoked occasionally, occasionally but yeah. never, like, oh, yeah. I, I need a shisha, like, on a daily no, basis. I haven't skipped a day since, like, 11, 12 yeah. years. Nice. Nice. Coughing up shisha smoke on the, uh, on it was, the it field. It was, yeah. it was yeah. different. Yeah. So and then, yeah, we met, we went back, uh, so he came grade 11, I believe? Or I came back grade 11 to his school again. Yeah. Because I got kicked out again from that school. From that school. Yeah. And then I nice. went to his school. And yeah, we reunited there. And I remember, like, funny stories. When we met in grade six, uh, my parents always told me my, our future is to go to Canada, right? So I told him that. He said, I'm Canadian, too, so we're going to meet there. And literally, it was just like a what, one sentence. One, and 
So six, seven years after, like we yeah. actually went together. We to actually went together. University so we, 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 but we kind of had this plan, but it didn't really work out well because mm -hmm. we were all supposed to go to one place, to Ottawa, in the beginning. Yes. No, remember yeah. when Shamut, me and Shamut. Because you wanted to go to Ottawa. Yeah, because right? uh, like you told me there's an Arab community there, sort of. Uh, an Arab community, bro. Like uh, our community, not Arab. <laughs> our yeah, like but there was when community. when I went to Ottawa, bro. It was just people were speaking Arabic that? on the streets, bro. Yeah, yeah. I felt like this is Saudi 2.0. I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Especially so, where the city we came from. But funny, so when we came actually, this fast forwarding a little bit, when we came to Canada, what this guy did, we're supposed to live in the same uh, house, right? Yeah. So uh, he came before me. I came like two weeks after him. I came three days a before school started. So he used to go to Seneca for the first year, and I used to go to York, and then he came to York after. But anyways, when he started at Seneca, he was supposed to find a house between exactly in the middle between my school and his school. You're right? telling me this, yeah. Yeah, and I trusted yeah. him, and this guy is doing it, <laughs> and he's been looking, and all, everything's going fine. I come like a day before school starts, and I know where my school is, and I'm going like further away. I'm like, okay, he didn't find anything, you know, like suck to suck. We both have to like struggle to get to school. But we we came in late, bro. Like you, you, we we came in late. We came in but really we late. Find something near my school late. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and then it turns out to be like we literally left. Two minutes uh, right across from Seneca, <laughs> like literally a three minute distance from his school, one hour and a half busing from Bus. my school. <laughs> two buses. I, I was like, how did you? Actually, uh, two buses, like, yeah. And he was in civil engineer. I like, yeah. you were the worst civil engineer, measuring like the exact. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he only lasted 20 minutes in civil engineering school. That's exactly. Test, yeah. Probably that's after that test. He <laughs> failed <it> miserably. <laughs> he couldn't really pick something in the middle at all. And then we ended up moving both to York. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. We, we, we went to multiple places. The first place was right in the middle. It was on Young and Steel's. Oh, that one was fair. Yeah, that one was fair. Yeah, but, but that place, she hated us. <laughs> so we moved there, and then, bro, she like, we used to smoke and bring people so much to the house. And she used to, like, just show up to the house, bro. Yeah, I hated that. And then we used to, like, panic and hide the shishas and, like, that's literally bro. we're traumatized about someone invading our privacy because <laughs> the way she would show up. <laughs> and that we used to do everything that we're not allowed to do at the house. So, yeah, it used to be dramatic all the time yeah but let's talk about coming to Canada we came to Canada so me and him both had similar somewhat of a similar salary from our parents yeah. it was a, like it was one that was calculated by the dollar you mean like a a literally allowance. by the dollar like allowance yeah, yeah exactly. allowance yes, yes. yes. Like it salary. <laughs> salary, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we treat it. Great. I was hired as a <laughs> like a salary. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was literally, cal like, you don't understand, Vlad. Yeah. We used to go to North Hills, uh, which was like a 15 minute walk from, from our place. We, we didn't take a taxi because that's like a. What taxi, like, the way we used to look at taxis back in the day. It's like you're especially rich. In Canada, as if, like, I'm going on a private jet right now. <laughs> like, is it worth it to go on a yeah, private yeah, jet? Yeah. Like, I can just use the regular airplane, yeah. but this is the same way we used to look at taxis. It was so expensive, bro. Just they to be clear, you guys are talking about you guys came to canada without your parents yeah so kind they came of. so or, it kind of because my parents came in for like two days <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> drove us around and then went home <laughs> his parents live in another city live in yeah. london ontario right, so right, right, is, right. You know. which is hours away but yeah hours yeah, away yeah. but yeah so we, when and then i remember one time bro, i will not forget this day man so we we kind of and i remember our first weekend in canada hey, do you remember that when we went to the arabic place so oh, i've never been to an arabic club bro yeah. we went to oko blue Oh, you're talking about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we went to Oko Blue, right? So, and this Oko Blue was like, it doesn't exist no more. I think they changed the name to something else right they now. They closed but it down. Yeah, probably. and and it was a shisha bar. It was my first time, bro, ever seeing like a shisha bar with singers and dancing. But I was, it was crazy. So a, a friend of us, you know, we had some friends here from, from well, somewhat of friends from Saudi. And she's like, yeah, I, I got to take you guys to this place. And we go there and, bro, like we, like, I think we spent a half hour, a half hour allowance in that place. Literally, literally. And then we go back and like, yo, I think we made a mistake, bro. I think we, <laughs> I think we, we overspent. <laughs> I, I think we like, overspent this time. We're not meant to go places. Yeah, like we're that. not. We're absolutely not. And then he, one day, bro, he comes back home, and he like has this this stack of cash. That was first. No, but before that, like the way it was calculated, like, okay, should we talk numbers? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we used to live in a basement. Yeah. That was like probably six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So we're three hundred dollars each, which each. is super super oh, nice. cheap yeah. compared to that. But but how our allowance is, yeah. was like six hundred dollars, right? So we had three hundred dollars literally for rent, <laughs> and then we had like the gym and the uh, phone bills, all that. Like we literally have like not even hundred fifty for the whole month as pocket money, and we're okay. I think we did okay. The I first don't know month. how. I don't know how we did okay. Like we did okay. Like we didn't S struggle that much. Stretch the dollar. Bro. And you guys yeah. came from money back home. 
uh, or you we're, guys were comfortable. Uh, yeah, 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 comfortable, very comfortable very families. Yeah. Not not the craziest, like rich, rich. But, but whatever but wanted something and couldn't get it in that sense. But right, it was right, never right, right. way extra than yeah. Yeah. Right, what right, we right, wanted. Right. We knew some people that were rich back home. Yeah, we've like, seen it all. We knew, yeah. we, we, we've seen. Yeah. But, but basically it was, it was a lot different than what you were used to. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That's well, the yeah. first time you gotta actually, like, we, and we never calculated how much we're about to spend right. or how much yeah. would we have left after we do this and that. But yeah, and then I think I remember one day I broke my shisha home and then I went to Kijiji and I looked up a store that sells shisha. So the way it worked is I called them, I couldn't understand what they were saying, but I thought it's a place that sells shisha, like a retail shop. Yeah. So I go all the way, like I take a two hour, probably three, four bus rides. After two hours, I reached that place, and then it turned out to be a shisha lounge, not a shisha, not a shisha retail shop. And then I told him I was, I was the one that uh, talked to you guys over the phone, and he's like, "Yeah, come on, come on." He takes me to the kitchen. There's literally 150 shishas laying around. He's like, "Stop washing." So apparently, like on the phone call, I thought he said, "Come, so you can like buy shisha," but he meant we need people to, to work. work. <laughs> and then that was the ad that was up. So I ended up watching shishas for like, I couldn't say no, I was just like, just shy. <laughs> it's like, like oh, okay, busy. I, they guess, were I guess I gotta, they, they had a I don't party. know, I, I've never heard that story. Yeah, yeah they were packed, they had a party. I, I don't think we ever discussed like looking for work. Yeah. Like we never thought about it because where we come from is we don't work you at that work, age. You can't work, yeah, right? you yeah. can't work at that we age. We never thought about that. Maybe that was a plan in like a year or two, but not at that moment. Anyway, so I started watching shishas from like 6 p.m. to like literally 3 a.m. washing dishes, doing all that. And I remember at that time he gave me $200 cash in one day. And in the 20s whole, yeah and in the whole 20s. time the whole time it was like I was thinking this is the last I can't wait till I go home when he gave me $200 a day <laughs> when I used to like get $600 a month he's like we're gonna come tomorrow I'll be like I'll be here 4 p.m. I'll be here tomorrow <laughs> every single day so I worked after that for a month and then I came back with $3,000 yeah I think bro and he th swear to yeah. God bro he comes and I was sitting in the living room I don't know I was on my phone and he just has a stack of cash and he throws it on the ground <laughs> I'm like, well, what did you steal? <laughs> what are we selling drugs? What are, what's happening? And that's when he's like, yo, like, and then after, and then I started looking for a job because at that point they weren't hiring another person. And we started asking, you know, the mutual friends that we know. And bro, I went to so many places and then I got hired. I got not hired. Like I, I, a guy wanted to work, get me to work at a, at a burger place. So I lied so much on my, on my resume, bro. He thought I was like a burger. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was a burger expert and I think he was even the writing it from me bro like yes this guy worked at this place well like if you know 1% about Saudi you know that everything I wrote down was a lie yeah. like everything I wrote down was a lie and uh, I go there and he figured out the first day <laughs> that I've never flipped a burger in my entire life <laughs> and then and then bro he like he just not not true I don't want to say treat me like shit but he just like not yelled at me but he kept being rude I'm like, bro, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you I'm, I'm, I'm you about to. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, he maybe. Said. But I just, I wasn't used to somebody like, yeah, t yeah. T like talking shit to me, bro. So on the third day, which was supposed to, oh, I have to figure out, oh, the third shift with them, I have to, they have to figure out if they're gonna hire me or not. He calls me. He's like, hey, bro, f, f that, come with me to the shisha bar. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you're just gonna prove yourself to this guy. And he was just some Bengali guy, bro, yeah. that owned the place. You just gotta prove yourself to him. You gotta prove yourself to him. Oh my God, it's, what do you want me to do? Clean, clean, and I start cleaning the shishas and I start cleaning everything. And bro, we, he, eventually he hired me. Yeah. And we started working. We, we stayed at that place for some time. Oh yeah, and they even changed like ownerships. So we stayed with a couple yeah, owners. Yeah, we stayed a couple owners. Uh, and then like I ended up like taking control of the kitchen. He ended up taking control of the front of the, the front, house. The front, yeah. And yeah, we're a good team, but uh, and then who left first? You left first. I left first. Yeah, yeah you left I, first. I went to the other place. Yeah, so you started the restaurant at that point. He, because yeah. he took control of, this is where I feel like the restaurant loving part right. of him started. Because he was taking care of the kitchen. So he was pretty much cooking and then making the shishas. And I was just taking the orders, putting it out, cleaning and yeah, sitting yeah, yeah. people. Like that, it was two guys running the whole place and the place was big, bro. It you wasn't were, you were more front end, he was back end. Yeah. And exactly. it was just, yeah. and, but it was a, bro, yeah. it was not a it small place. Yeah, 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 yeah. How much, how many people do you think can fit that entire place? At least oh. 200 people, bro. Oh, I would say 200 people easy. Yeah. yeah and man, all these Friday, Saturdays, they're crazy. Packed, right. bro. But you guys were working on like what tips, salary, like no, no, hourly, he paid us cash, no, cash, cash, cash. No, no, and plus waiting. tips, I guess. Uh -huh. like but you guys were running the show. But sometimes he stole yeah. the tips. <laughs> no, no, but I think uh, from you. Uh, he yeah, never I paid me so. tips. A lot of times. <laughs> um, um, what I think, um, 
we're getting like eleven dollars an hour. Yeah, eleven dollars. Probably ten, eleven dollars yeah. an hour. Oh, ten, but ten, it used ten, to be a lot, ten. man. Yeah, yeah but To us, bro, when when you're making six hundred dollars from your parents and then you make six hundred dollars in like a, a week of work, he's like, bro, yeah. like, I can, I can, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm rich. I'm rich. Yeah. We used to go. So we and here's another. I think when we started working, now it's the winter time. We don't have jackets, bro. In Saudi, you don't need you don't need these big ass jackets. Yeah. But then we hear that these. Greg was jackets were too expensive. I'm like, okay, let's go to H and M. I'll never forget this day. We went to H and M. We spent seven hundred dollars in one day, bro. Crazy. And we used to share. We used to share the same clothes. When we used to be the same way. When yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and I, bro, it was it was insane because I know like I know like that. I, I feel like it, it it shaped me a lot at that point. Like it started shaping who we are. It started shaping mm-hmm. like what we do. We started understanding the country a little bit more. Our English became better because God knows our English, bro. And we came from international schools. So we were supposed to. Like, I I studied like 12 years in international school. It's all English. But then we figured out we were not learning English. It's just bullshit. (laughs) We couldn't even tell. Like, I remember when I came here for probably two months, I couldn't even communicate to the bus driver that want to get off at that station. Oh, remember that one. And, man, I would. Like, I see all these people getting down, and my dream is was to find out how the hell does the bus driver know he has to stop here. Because he would skip. And then for two months straight, I wouldn't know. And then after that, I realized that freaking yellow the, thing. Yellow that he just literally, yeah. And at that time, I don't think there was that stop thing. No, it wasn't the stop. It was just the... Yeah, the, that, maybe there was one at the handicap, like, yeah, right yeah, in front yeah. of the bus, but nothing in the back. And so after you, what I figured, would you do? You would just pray that... I would, literally, no, I would literally go to the bus driver. And tell him. And, oh, and I would be like... <laughs> Can you um, uh, stop here? Uh, uh, and as soon as he's like, what? I'll just get shy and I'll just go back to the bus and suck to suck. I'll wait <laughs> till somebody gets off and then I have to go down and come back again. And I'll take turns till I get to the right stop. But it was some different yeah. times, man. That, so, I, li- I, like, I like that story. So the name of our, our show is Success After Dark. So what I'm hearing is, you know, you had some, you know, some success back home, came here. It was, you know, some dark times. No, I don't I know how in long. the beginning a little in bit. In the beginning a little well, bit. We got, we got into some troubles at the Shisha. Yeah. He used to get in trouble. <laughs> I used and to be the wise to <laughs> I used to be like, I'm that guy that would get in trouble because of him. Like, yeah. For no reason. That's, that's the thing. Like, I believe in like backing up your friends, but he <laughs> would force you to back him up in the stupidest shit ever. Like, he would go slap somebody, <laughs> and then that person would get mad, and he is expecting me to get mad that he got mad because he slapped him first. I'm like, how the fuck does that work? <laughs> so I, I swear we got into a fight once with like these guys oh, and bro. they went to the pickup truck we thought they were leaving and they just backed to the freaking glass door and they broke the store yeah. like they reversed the whole truck into the store into your guys store yeah, yeah oh. because we had it like we locked the doors yeah. and then they literally got in their pickup truck we thought they were leaving and they just backed them into the whole store yeah. I was like, shit. And yeah, we this got in a lot serious. of trouble at that store. But Good days. They did it by accident or on purpose? No, no. no they purpose, wanted to get in. They wanted purpose, to get us. Yeah. yeah. And we... Because yeah. we kicked them out. They wanted to come back uh-huh. in. And they didn't get a... They broke... broke the, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Good days. But then after that, he fell in love with the... Uh, with the... Restaurant business. Restaurant business. Right. He start, you start working at Jerusalem. And then I he... And so. then I, I hated... Because at that point, yeah. we changed the ownership of the Shisha Bar. And I hated the new owner, bro. Like... Disc, I, it was I'm called like, Jerusalem? So the no, restaurant was called Jerusalem, yeah. No, the one we used to work no, at. No, we used to call it like Clips. But yeah, then, I ha- and so he left to Jerusalem, and he was working there. Yeah. And then I hated the new owner. I, I, I couldn't stand this guy, bro. Yeah. So he's like, yo, come come work with me. Yeah. But he knows, bro, I'm not a kitchen guy. So he's like, okay, don't work here. Work in the buffet. <laughs> you got to do nothing in the buffet. Just make the sure the, 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 the food is clean. That's all. He's that type of guy that you see he does not belong there. You know? Yeah, like, <laughs> like there's 100%. 50 people working in the kitchen, and there's that one guy that you feel like he's not supposed to no, be there. Right. He's doing what he's supposed to do, but he just looks off. Yeah. And everything that he touches. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I ate at that point. I was in the gym, gym my gym mood. Yeah. So extra eating. I thought everything eating was you know. And I was a skinny kid, bro. So just eating extra. I just wanted to to kind of kind of figure it out. But then, you know that that's kind of when I felt I felt like he just he figured his his road, right? Yeah. Which I didn't, bro. I was still kind of on and off of school. Um, uh, you know, I, that's when I went to York at that point. Yeah. So I transferred to York, and I, I just couldn't figure out what my lane is up but, until. But did you see? Did you see that he was gonna? Ferris was gonna do something big. Yes. You yes. can see it from that point. Yeah. What was the point he that ran, you? Here's okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. Something. What was the point that? That you got place that? has been around 40 years. No, like it was. Uh, I think yeah. I heard it was the longest Arabic or uh, um, uh, yeah, oldest Arabic restaurant in Toronto. Yeah. And it's a huge, bro. Right. And it was owned by the same family. Like it's a family business. And it's Palestinians, right? It's called Jerusalem. And he, bro, like, when I, 
started working there. It was like maybe a couple months after. But bro, everybody was talking about Ferris, like the golden child, bro. Like he, I felt like he was like, like her son or something, bro. I'm like, did did you do something to these people, bro? But like, I guess you know, Ferris's work. I think I we can talk a little bit about work. I think because I, I think I got a lot of my work. I think in the be- like in the beginning from from Ferris. Like mm-hmm. Ferris is the type of guy that doesn't care about the pay. But just let's let's get the let's get this job done and let's make sure yeah. it's it looks good. Let's make sure it's it's That's an entrepreneur, it's at a, entrepreneur at a, yeah. mindset. Yeah. So, but I never had that mindset because I'm like, yo, we're gonna get like we're we're gonna get money regardless. It's an hourly, right, 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 right? So right. to me, but he he, I th- I guess his philosophy is, is well so at that point how you do anything is how good. you do everything, right? There's a book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and the and the rich dad talks about. I'm not going to pay you a salary because you're going to think like a worker. You're going to yeah. think like an employee. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, and the poor dad is like, no, 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 no. You need, you need a, you need an hourly wage. You need a salary. You need, you need it. Right. But if you, if you get, if you learn experiences, you know, that, that is more valuable than, than the hourly wage. Yeah. And it obviously paid off. I want to talk about, you know, uh, I don't know if the viewers, we clarify this, but now you own three restaurants. No, uh, one that four restaurants. Banquet hall, we're getting into about about bank- like four yeah. restaurants and yeah. a banquet hall. Uh, we're getting into a banquet yes. hall business yeah. together. We yes. are uh, so we banquet hall event and rentals. Event, event rentals. Yeah, and you guys are are, are partners on two. We yeah, so partners we in this partners restaurant, restaurant, this one, and then, yeah. and then, and then the, the second one, and then the, the, right. the so technically four. three because the banquet hall is separate than the maybe four actually the catering kitchen. Nice. So how so how did it stuff I don't know but great how did it get from from start with the first. The first bi- uh, restaurant you opened. How did that go about? And then maybe one to. F- okay, I have a story for that. Yeah. One day, bro. I so this is when I found kind of what my road is. What it was good life. It was the gym. I felt like he knew, bro. I felt like I belonged to the gym. Yeah. I knew. That's bro, when this he actually stopped working for money. Like yes. that, I think that's like yes. he used to go there, and I don't think like just at the chill, beginning bro. he was making that much no, money, no. but he would just live there. He yeah. would live at the gym. Like, I for loved 12, it, bro. 14 hours straight. Loved it, bro. I get paid four hours. Let's say they're 14 hours, no problem. It's just chill at the gym, work out, meet everybody. Yeah. And then I eventually start doing sales, but without getting paid the salary, just by commissions. Right. So I, I kind of kind of figure out what I really want. And that's it, bro. I, my, my, I, like in my head, I'm going to work at this company forever. And one time, bro, we, we met up, after, this is after years, and he, you were working at, at a big, I don't, I don't know if I want to name it, but a big restaurant chain in, yeah. in Toronto. And I'm like, bro, when are you gonna open up your own thing? He's like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Like he wasn't, so he, it was in his mind, but he just couldn't find the uh, right opportunity. How yeah. to go? Like, yeah, the, the mm-hmm. how to. But he was running. He he was. You were running that place. Yeah. Like you were uh, somewhat of a regional manager, well, well, a regional kitchen. Manager. Yeah, regional manager for. Mm-hmm. And that's a bro, not a billion, but they. It's, it's it's quite big. They had yeah. over 50, 60 stores. Like yeah. it's a huge, yeah. you know, chain in 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 Canada. And what happened, bro, is is. I, well, I think one day, bro, like I got a call from him, and he's like, "Like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm opening the place." And um, yeah, bro, that that's how I feel like. That was his first uh, ecstatic. ecstatic. That was the that was the the first like mm-hmm. restaurant ownership at this point. And you want to share the story of what happened in in, in, in ecstatic in the beginning? Because he told me it w- oh, like he yeah. thought it would go like, <laughs> okay, so and it went backwards. Went, like, yeah, I actually like. Bro, I was like, okay, as a chef. Like your dream is to open your own restaurant, but I wanted to like stay in corporate for like another five, six years to learn everything before I right. move to the next step. Because once you start your own business, you can't go back to corporate kind of. So I didn't feel like I had enough of corporate, right? And then I was actually going to another company as a regional uh, manager for uh, USA and Canada. And at that time I lost my PR. So I got accepted, it was a really good salary. That's when I decided to quit school. And then actually just, that's it, treat myself as the chef I'm, I'm, I want to be. And because I didn't have my PR, I'm like, okay, once they actually tell me to submit my papers for employment, I'll be like, I have to explain, I don't have my PR, I lost it. And, and the reason, like, I didn't have it for three years because I was too lazy to apply for a new one. And it's a whole new story. So anyways, I was driving. That was one of the motivations that made me not take that job right away. And then I was driving like a that street Bayview Avenue and I'd never been to that street right so I saw a store for lease I go down I call the number I didn't even have one quarter of the investment needed for that restaurant anyways I don't know why I went down I don't know why I called the place looks like shit from like when you look at it from the side like it's nothing special it's not like oh oh, I just saw my dream like nothing special at all I call the real estate agent answers right away he's like oh I'm here come in I go in the place looks like shit from inside nothing I don't know why like I was impressed by it anyways so I put an offer, a very stupid offer that I know they would never accept, and I walk out, 
They called me the next day, they accepted it. Anyways, long story short, three months after I had a restaurant. So this is how nice. literally it went out. How old were you at the time? 23. 23, yeah. first restaurant. 23, 23, 23 yeah. 23, yeah. 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 Back in 2018. So when I opened the restaurant, I didn't know what was going to be the concept till like three weeks before opening. So I was renovating that place, but I didn't know what that restaurant was going to be. Like I didn't even so you're know. renovating, your, did you, this is your savings that you're using at the time? Yeah, and I got like an investment somehow yeah. uh, in the most like random way. And yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like I didn't even know what the concept was going to be for like two weeks before opening. And it was we open, so that was my shot, right? So even I remember when I went to my parents and... I told them finally, like, that's it. Like, yeah. I'm quitting school forever. I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be a chef. I like that. I'm going to be it a chef. It was like a do, a do it and figure it out later kind no, of thing. No, but yeah. listen to this. Yeah. but Because yeah. his dad, both of his parents are... Uh, um, Very into education. Like, like yeah. corporate life forever. They, like, yeah. no, no, no restaurant business? No, no, no restaurant. No, no, no. We don't have Very any, opposite, yeah. Like, um, no. my whole family, like, my extended... Yeah. My, yeah. I never knew somebody that opened a business, like, in my family. You know, it's yeah. all corporate. You work, you get a... They're in the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry. Both. Yeah, so I go, I remember I went to my dad, where he was sitting in the backyard, I was telling him like, okay, I'm um, opening my restaurant in two weeks, and that's it. So <laughs> I remember his face was like, he covered his face, and he was so disappointed. <laughs> and then, that was at like 9 p.m. I you told him the name of it too? Ecstatic? No, exactly, yeah. Like, he didn't even care about the name. He just cared that I'm, like, all he heard is I'm dropping school. He does even if I told him I made $10 million at that time, he cared about that one word, that I'm done with school, right? And then I remember he covered his face for like three hours. Not even, I swear, I left him at 9 p.m. I went out with my friends. I came at 2 a.m. And he's literally sitting in the backyard still doing this. <laughs> I'm like, man, come on. Like, let's go over this. <laughs> like, you know, like, it made me feel so bad. It wasn't easy, like, you know what I mean? To, yeah. like, go through all that. Anyways, I opened it. was one, my shot, one shot. That's it. Either make it or mm -hmm, break it. Mm -hmm. At that age, at 23, that's it. If you lose all your investment. The problem is, it's not you're gonna you're not gonna go back to point zero. I have no problem till this day to go back to point zero. But then the problem is you're going way in negative, mm -hmm. and then, unfortunately, like being a chef, like you don't get paid that much outside of your own business mm -hmm. to make that money back quickly, right? right? So it was a big risk. Anyway, I open up. Uh, so I had three options: either the restaurant is gonna be very very successful, I is gonna be like a regular restaurant, like steady base, not too successful, nothing special, but. I'm not losing money. Or it's going to be that one restaurant where literally I'm just sitting smoking shisha. One order comes. I go, I cook my eggs, I come back. Like literally nobody working, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nobody coming in. Anyway, so it turns out to be the first three months, like we just opened the door. I didn't even have enough money for marketing or ideas or whatever. I literally, all I did just unlock the door, put the sign up. People started coming in. And I opened in December. I remember in January we lost money. February we lost money. March we lost money. And then I had April to go. That's it. So April, if I lose money, that you're done. I'm done. I'm out of business in four months. Look how stupid <laughs> I'll look in front of everybody that I told like, I was about to open a business, and some people were proud of me. Some people hated the idea. But anyways, like to both kind of people, like they'll be like, "What the hell went wrong?" Like in four months, literally, I was done. Mm -hmm. So the fourth month, and even when I started, like I had broken chairs. Maybe I can't saw. Like I yeah, had broken yeah, yeah. chairs. It was. It was. Uh, I remember like, getting some place from Dollarama, like just to get through, like. Literally, like, uh, I had the minimum, minimum resources. So April comes, and I had, like, let's say, around fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 left. And that wasn't even enough to pay the rent for the store. And I had 30 days. At that end of that month, if I don't make enough money, I'm out, right? And then I decided, that instead of saving that $15,000 for some odd reason, to invest, invest back in the business. I hired, like, at least five, six more people. I went, I got like, instead of the $3 plates, I had like $80 plates. I literally reinvested the whole $15,000. I left myself with n nothing in the bank account. Like literally, I remember like $50, $60. And I'm like, that's it. That's the only way I know like there's no other option. Like either I make it or break it. This is the last month. And I don't know what happened. That month was the turnover for the restaurant. We sold like, I'd say four times more than Marsh. And since then, it's, it's been going up. And we paid our rent. We were able to like even make profit on the first. So I went from losing like twenty, thirty thousand a month to making the same amount of money a month. So yeah, that was the month. I that love that. Uh, so yeah, after that, like that's it. Like once you know the way, once you know how to make yeah, it, once yeah, you yeah. you kind of figure out the rest. 
and I ended up opening the second restaurant a year after doing COVID. The second restaurant uh, was uh, the backyard. backyard yeah. 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 To the smoke house. Really. I heard it's a really good place. It's yeah. really it's good. It's a different concept. Yeah, yeah different concept. Oh, uh, it's in downtown. How did, you, how did you figure out? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, first of all, like even ecstatic, bro, yeah. it's not like an, it's an Arabic place. Yeah. It's a it's breakfast a, spot? It's I, I never had a breakfast ex like experience. Yeah, it's a, I would say it's a brunch spot. Yeah, brunch spot. With, with, like, it's a twist between like Western an, and Yeah, Western Middle Eastern and Middle Eastern. Yeah. But then Backyard just came out of nowhere, bro. Yeah. In the middle of COVID. I remember that's the thing. That's when I started adapting because we got really, like, uh, we got affected by COVID when it happened, especially <laughs> with my kind of restaurant because it's brunch. Who would want to eat, like, eggs and stuff to go, right? Like, it's not something that... It wasn't a necessity? No. No. And, and it, it's not something that would taste good, like, if you take it on delivery, right? Right, right, right. right. Like, you want it, right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I okay. never, like, like right, my right, right. take-up percentage is not even 10% in sales, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when I was like, okay, I want to open a concept that's... Because we didn't know what was going to happen with COVID. Like, is it going to stay the, for right. like that for how long or whatever? So I wanted to open a concept that's kind of can work for both. Like, indoor, I mean, indoor dining, outdoor delivery all that that's where it, like that's that. where the yeah. so two two things i'm taking from this so far one because i've seen rakan do this too is where you don't like saving your money the bet the best movements in your business happen when you reinvested the money in your yeah. bank back into the business yeah. and in your spot it was basically to save the business and not only to save the business it also you know projected you to, to building one two three yeah. you know locations rakan i've seen do it multiple times where in the first, what was it, a year and a half? You didn't yeah. save any money yeah. at all. Everything first, going back yeah. in the business. First Maybe two even two years, years. Two yeah. and a half years. Two and a half years. Everything back in the business, and it, and it paid off exponentially. Yeah. Right? I mean, and then the second thing is there's no reward if there's no risk. It's true. 100%. You know, it's true. I, I, the, the two stories I'm hearing, the one was uh, the ecstatic, and then the second one, the, the smokehouse and COVID, two big risks. Yeah. And they both end up paying off, you know. But then Petra came around. I want to ask you, because, bro, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So, one thing, so I've been traveling at that point, right? Yeah. I came back from, from, from a tour in, in, I think, in the Middle East. Calls me up, where are you? Home. He's like, bro, let's, let's, let's come chill. So He's like a random call, bro, random day. I'm like, you know what, bro, it's that type of day. You know what I mean? It's just back up my shit. And he, he sends me an address. It's like just a normal address, right? And I've been to Petra before, right? Um, so I, 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 you know, I come in, I park my car. I'm like, bro, like, this is the wrong place. I'm, I'm at Petra. This is not, this, like, where are we sitting? I thought we are going to chill. Like, where are we going to chill? The place is not open. And he's like, no, no, come in, this is whatever. So I come in, bro, the place is like upside down. It's not, there's nothing there, there's some chairs, they're fixing stuff. He sits down with me, he's like, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna take this place over. When was this? Early Six, this year. seven months ago. Yeah, yeah. early this year. Early 2022. 2022, yeah. yeah. 2022, yeah. Yeah. Early. yeah. I, I was like, literally like, you know, off, oh, this is like, yeah, early 2022. As soon as I came back from like Dubai and my Middle East tour, I think I came to Dubai straight to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And a, a, He's like, okay, well, one, two, three. This is here's how the investments here, how yeah. we're gonna get paid. This and was like the fastest like deal. The ever. first yeah. is the, <laughs> like, but I didn't like even bl uh, no blinking. Bro. He's okay, easy, so easy to do business. Easy. To <laughs> that, 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 this is how it happened, right? He came and we started catching up, whatever. Like I haven't seen him in like three months. Yeah. At that time, so I told about the investment. He's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, okay, let's do it. We talked about it for like literally three minutes. I went back to like ask about other <laughs> shit, you know. What I mean? and I was then like literally, like we had like a one-hour conversation. Yeah. That investment part was like literally three minutes of it. Literally, <laughs> and the partnership was done. That was so easy bro, <laughs> to convince. So okay, so we're taking over this. How much are we making? Oh, uh, one, perfect. two, three, perfect. Makes sense. Okay, <laughs> tomorrow we'll wire the money. <laughs> and again, like going back to like what we were saying about like the mindset of reinvesting. I think, I, I think it can be. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but this is how I, I think like. I believe in maybe Rakan does too. Yeah. Is a lot of people think about how to reduce their costs or how to spend less. I would rather waste my time how to increase sales, whether it's in business mm. or how to make more money as a person. Yeah, because I don't want to, especially at that age. Maybe later on when I make like a lot, a lot of money, where okay, now I need to manage my money. That's different. But me thinking about my costs now, whether in business or as a person, I'd rather not do that. Mm. I'd rather waste my energy making more money because at the end of the day if, yeah. like if you keep thinking about how you're going to decrease your cost then you won't care to make more right yeah. you know what i mean because you're kind of like managing it right it's but easier like, to make more money than it is to save more money. i'd rather yeah. always be like no matter how much money i'm making yeah. i don't want to be ever like making enough money for the things that i'm spending so i can always be motivated to make even more yeah. and more like right huh. and then after that like once you get to a good stage you can start thinking about how to manage that money i agree yeah, yeah. I want to ask you guys a question. So you guys had, you know, you were fr friends back home in Saudi, and you guys had a lot of, uh, you know, friends international schools. So they all, they all had, you know, s s 
relatively successful families. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you guys still keep in touch with those friends? And if, if you do, uh, what are they up to? Are they doing, you know, are they on, doing entrepreneur stuff? Are they, are they trying to build something big? Like, where, where did the friends go? Well, I feel like Ferris is better than me in, in, in this specific subject. I, um, I don't want to say I, 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 I cut everybody off, but I feel like when I started my business, I don't know, bro. Maybe I'm, I, I was just too sensitive that I felt like it, it was more of a, like the circle that we had, it was more of a mocking me. Maybe I just felt that it wasn't true, but I felt like there was a mocking scene. So I just like, I just like not cut off everybody, but just like, yeah, whatever. But he, I think you stayed more in contact with a lot of them more than somewhat more than I did. Yeah. I lasted more than Rakam. But yeah. I feel like nothing happened more than like people just get busy. Yeah. Like, we, we like, like life, life happens. got bigger. Yeah. Like we have more contacts now. Like it's hard to keep up with everybody. I think like now if, let's say if your lifestyle works around like a way where you can see somebody you will see him but yeah. if not then it'll be very hard do you um, know anybody that didn't graduate but us from our circle because everybody that i met recently in saudi that, they all graduate i think i think yeah they have no other option because back home feels like if you don't graduate you're a failure there's no other option <laughs> yeah. like, like it's so not like, it's not like north america bro that way you can like do yeah like they, they would literally just stop talking to him like you'll be that <laughs> look at that loser he never graduated so would you like, stay would, ever would you stay in school t- until you graduated or? literally they would say Wait, we know you people have a 22 year old with a beard i know people that graduated last year bro yeah people would the, go crazy bro like, i'm 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 t- almost 27. We're both the almost 27. Well, he's I'm he's 27. A little bit older. Yeah. Two but, kids, but <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, actually, we have friends that have kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We have. We have. At friends. least married. Like well, two things kids. that happen, but some people have kids, and this guy got married out of nowhere. Calls me up one oh, day, right, bro, right, and yeah. he's like, Tom with Ferris. Yeah. yeah. And and he calls me up and he's like, yo, like yeah, we. I'm, I'm, I'm getting married. So I thought I it was a prank. I always call him up with big news. I never, like, I think the last three <laughs> it's years. Not small, it's not small calls. Yeah, yeah, it's all And then he calls work. me. And I swear to God, Vlad, I swear, bro, I thought it was a prank. Mm. Let me tell you how I thought it was a prank. I didn't even invite my parents to the wedding. I told him to get my parents. He's like, no, I don't feel it's necessary. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> bro, like, I thought My dad knows his dad since they were in university Okay, let's well. talk about that. Yeah. So, okay, so he, here's what we discovered after. Like, this is maybe when we were somewhat in high school. My dad... And his dad studied in the same university back home. Yeah, so they knew each other. Yeah, and well, yeah, when when um, when it, bro, it, I just I didn't even bother to bring my parents. <laughs> I thought he was joking, man. It's it's just bro. If you thought he's going to like my birthday. So what happened? Did you did you get there and then you're like, oh shit. Is that actually actually I, thought, I thought it was like a because uh, it's COVID, right? So I'm yeah. like, oh, this is a little wedding, you know. Then we're gonna have so maybe this is like a small whatever, and the next time is gonna have a bigger wedding. Yeah. But then he never had a big one. <laughs> that was the I only never one. had a honeymoon. So yeah, he, 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 and we'll talk about the honeymoon part after. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like remember that it wasn't like, so I walk in and, he, and he's telling me, he's like, bro, I, I feel like they lied to me. <laughs> What'd you tell me? He's like, I don't think I was supposed to get married today. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so this is what happened, right? <laughs> so, like, I met the right person way too early, right? I never wanted to get married like, before I was 30 yeah, or something. No, but no. when you meet the right person way too early, especially in our culture, you gotta get married, right? Yeah. So, I kind of like, okay, let's it. Like, I have to do it. And I always believed in the concept that you have to be ready in a certain way to get married, right? Mm-hmm. Or to settle down or whatever. But then it turns out to be that you're never gonna be ready enough because what's ready? Yeah. You know I mean, like, I, goes for I, everything business, exactly. friendship, relationship, because yeah. Like for some people, ready is not being in debt, and then mm-hmm. after that, like okay, I want to have ten thousand dollars in saving, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe fifty, maybe actually buy a house. So it keeps adding up. So you'll never be actually ready enough. So you gotta find the right person that you get ready together, right? Yeah. So once that idea kicked in, then I decided to go forward. But because it was COVID, we said okay, we're gonna do like a small wedding party for Canada, like the people in Canada, and then we're gonna go back home and do the bigger wedding mm-hmm. next year. And then that was a plan. Three four days out before the like the ceremony, you wouldn't even call a wedding. Like an invitation letter was. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, in my mind, it was a little cool thing. Like a ceremony, but then literally it turns out to be like a wedding. Like we did everything that was supposed to do be done in, in a wedding, and it just turns out to be a wedding. Like I didn't decide that. My wife didn't decide it. Like we just ended up yeah, like no. literally. Did you meet wedding. her in Canada or? Yeah, we met in Canada. Oh, you met in Canada. Is she from the same? Is she from Saudi too? Or? Yeah, she actually was there too. Oh, oh really? Was, I don't know. She's been in Delta. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. someone was telling me that she but went I to know. school with your sister? 
with no, the that's his sister. My sister. Well, that's his oh, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. What? But whenever, like, when it, when it, I've like, never heard of she this. She left like before we started talking. So I don't. I didn't. Uh, I thought she was in Jordan. So she was in Saudi, yeah, she and she came here straight when she was younger, yeah, or yeah, she came way before us. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But like at one point she was. I didn't. Wow. I got a question for her. So. I remember when Rakan was starting out his business, a lot of his, you know, friends from whether it was back home or friends here didn't really support, yeah. like you were saying, the mocking crowd. Did your friends support your businesses, your your restaurants when you were first getting them started before you had, you know, the success you have now? Mm-hmm. And, and did the success change that? I think a little bit better than Rakan. The only reason is because the type of business that I'm in is different. Usually, like, because Rakan started to make money right away, right? So people kind of like it's. It like, looked like not, it. <laughs> the illusion that it I looked like. Yeah. But like, this is the type of business, right? Yeah. You're in yeah, type yeah, of business, yeah. like, you gotta like, like you always like. Yeah, you have talk to. He had to, how, he like, had to market like yes, right? yes, yeah. yeah. So you always talk about financials. Yeah. So yeah. people like usually don't like that, mm-hmm. whether like they're jealous or they can't make it. Right, or right, right, right. They make it. They don't want someone else to do it. For me, they kind of like felt bad. Oh, it's a tough business, like yeah. being a restaurant. It's a restaurant. They, they, a lot of people the know. Yeah. They know. So they yeah. kind of felt I bad agree. about that. But I think it's just because of a different type of business. Right. Yeah. Because Rakan's business is always about financials and stuff. And because it's a sensitive topic, right, maybe right, a lot right. of people didn't support it. I agree. It, but, yeah. did, did, it, did you have trouble coming? Because I've seen Rakan, you know, working in sales and marketing. It, coming from, you know, the Middle East, being Arab working with you know in, in canada and in the u.s it you were facing some challenges you know building a business here were you did you feel any of the sort of the same thing when you were here or or, or not Speaking really for myself i already think so no whenever I looked, especially in toronto it is very diverse like, yeah you don't really you're talking about like somebody like like some like racist stuff like, discri- like, discrimination. Where, like discrimination, like ha- like any of that. <laughs> no, no. No, really. I feel like we. <laughs> there's a we big were, yeah. You guys we took were, over. Like we were discriminating. Against <laughs> <laughs> we came here. I feel left out. You know. <laughs> man, like we came here, and, like we felt like we belong here, like more than yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? true. Like we both think came with the mentality that we're never going back with no reason. That's good. Just, like, we gave her our all. Like yeah. You know, yeah. I I loved. Well, I don't know, it's a bunch of things, bro. First of all, I love being free. I love being alone. So that was kind of like a different vibe from like living with parents when I was back home. So, yeah, I, I, it, it, I don't think discrimination in a sense. I guess my business kind of, I've had that before. I feel like we were discriminating more when we were back home. <laughs> yeah, bro, back home. <laughs> but back home, it's not called racism, though. No, no, it's not. Like, it's we, not, we didn't not. even hear about these terms until we got yeah, here. Yeah, like, I, I didn't, bro, I've never heard the word racism up until I came Or here. anxiety or depression. Oh, yeah, or depression or ADHD <laughs> or any of these yeah. any of these. I can't clean my room because I have this or I can't yeah. work enough long right, hours. Right, right, right. Imagine, bro, I call up my dad, I'm like, I'm depressed. Yeah. Bro, he would make sure I'm depressed. <laughs> like, I think their job in life back home is to make us depressed. Because they feel like you should be miserable because they relate miser- being miserable Absolutely. to being serious, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. like, they feel when you're miserable, then you're serious about life. And then you understand life, right? But that's not how it works. Yeah. Like, you can so, be serious, but without being miserable. So, I've seen, so, Ferris, I've seen Rakan, he works, he, he has a crazy work ethic. He was, he was saying that, you know, he got some of that from you. What's your, you know, family life balance with the business and the restaurants? Where do you, you know, where do you see that the family coming into play with you trying to build, you know, empires and big businesses, restaurant chains? How does that work? So I feel like, okay, in my situation, which I'm not really proud of, there's not really a lot of balance. Mm -hmm. It's more like 99% of the time it's work. But is it necessary? No, not really. There's a lot of better ways to do it right. than the way I'm doing it. But the way I'd say I would go about it, or I kind of like resolve that issue, is whenever like I start working even way back before I open any stores, uh, the people that work with me, with my coworkers, my management, all that, they become my family. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm spending time with them at work. So even now, like maybe Rakan knows, everybody that works with us, like literally we are... Like, we hang out with each other every single day. Like, yeah. I don't have okay. friends outside of my work circle. Like, okay. all my friends literally either used to work with me or started working with me after, right? Mm-hmm. So we all, like, kind of chill at work. So that's the balance, the only balance I have. Like, yeah. even my wife, my sister, right, 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 right. everybody in my family, we work together. So we kind of meet at work. But like that. I think you have, you have the same thing. It's culture. Yeah, it's a big culture yeah. thing, yeah. Because yeah. I think life is too busy now, too practical to be able to, like, have a lot of time off outside of work and 
because if you like you end up chilling with somebody that's out of your work circle i'd say right. then you're missing out on other right. stuff that so, you can do. so ferris wh- where do you see yourself you, you know you're, you've been pretty successful now mm-hmm. in the past couple of years where do you see yourself in five years where do you see yourself where do you see the businesses the restaurants what's your big picture here honestly like i feel uh, I would say like I'll put it this way like okay the bigger dream is like literally have one of the biggest hospitality companies in North America and start expanding internationally mm-hmm. but it's more like I'm excited to see like how can I develop more as a person kind mm-hmm. of because that's what I care about I feel like people in the open business they're too attached to the business I'm not like basically whatever I, I did or whatever struggles I've been through I'm okay to struggle like, again like for 10 more times that's why like you gotta like take out that fear of losing everything because once you know how to do it once, like you can just do it again and again and again. Yeah. So I really don't like think about how to grow more than like in a business wise rather than just like how to learn how to do the, the same steps that I did but in a much easier, more, more efficient time than the time before. Mm-hmm. So, but I would say like the bigger dream than answering that question would be uh, having a bigger hospitality company that starts expanding into different fields of the restaurant business. Nice. Outside of Ontario, you want to go to the U.S.? Oh, yeah, no. You think in the United uh, not States? US. No, no, not, not necessarily. Oh, back, back overseas? Maybe back, back, back home, overseas. Yeah. I, like more, in, first of all, like other provinces in Canada. And uh-huh. Back home, U.S. probably will be the plan, but not for now. But I feel like you, you kind of started, you kind of started in the restaurant business and now you're not only, it's, it's no longer just the restaurant business, like yeah. especially the event company. Like that's, in a sense, yes, but it it's came. Hospitality. It came yeah, hospitality in general, but it came from what he missed here. So here in the restaurant, he felt like, okay, I'm spending X amount of money. Well, I don't need to spend that if I own the company. You know what I mean? And okay, well, let's create a business out of that. So I feel like yeah, in the, he he just found a need, and he figured, okay, that's not it's not clearly not only me. There's other people as well. So let's fill that need with owning a company. Yeah, right? it's becoming to a point where like whatever like we see like that's something that we need and instead of like getting it from somebody else we're literally just opening that business and we're giving it to ourselves mm-hmm. so we're just like basically i'd say finishing up the circle around yeah. our businesses hospitality so. yeah ecosystem so yeah. here's a question yeah. for you like you have multiple restaurants i'm guessing you you can't run by yourself you have mm-hmm. other people running yeah. for you um what's what what is the level of trust you would get like what and in in is it does that happen over time because i feel like the people that have like the people that run two of your places like ecstatic and uh um the backyard. backyard they you so they, they've been working for you for a long time kind of yeah and we were friends even before that so i'd say like this is what i believe in no matter what like the people that work with us like they gotta grow with us right so you gotta give them the concept that i always believe like that like make the the cake bigger give more slices out because that's the only way you can grow bigger in a healthy way. Yeah. You cannot do it on your own. Yeah. I'd rather have less percentage in something, but have like 10 of it, than have one thing and just stay at 100%. Mm. So this is the thing, like how we're scaling it out. But everybody like that. that basically started like, like let's say I would say executive levels, been with us for like four or five years. So like yeah. each manager, I would say like, okay, so we have like four businesses now. One person is handling, each person has, is handling their own store. And these four people were all in the same kitchen at Ecstatic, literally mm-hmm. a small, tiny kitchen. Mm-hmm. One That's guy crazy. was doing pancakes, one guy was doing satay, yep. one guy yep. is like main, and then now each one of them like literally can run. You know, I've restaurant. seen that. I was here for Petra. We had brunch last weekend, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's a, the system here is flawless. You got the guy doing pancakes. You got the omelets. You know, the cut someone doing cutlery, someone doing drinks. You got the waitresses, the waiters. You know, the, the people like everything is is a machine. What's the importance of having, you know, such an efficient system and having the right team? And how do you even find the right team? About, that was my next question. How do you find the right team? It's not easy it's hiring, not easy. It's not hiring, 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 hiring and finding oh, the right people. Not, like whenever I open a new store, let's say 80% out of the employees that are hired in the, like whenever we open, don't leave in the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. So you end up getting people that you trust and then we have to overwork and work like right, one right, person right. will take a job for like three people and then eventually we'll start adding the right people and only the right people. So I think like it starts kind of like, cause we work very, very hard. Like everybody, all the people that are in yeah. management work very, very hard. So when we have employees coming in, like unless like you're just a slacker, like and like you won't like see us work so hard and just chill, right? Like 
you he will start like thinking okay i have to be as efficient as they are mm -hmm. as fast as they are and i have to care as much as they do so i think if they see you care and you're working like 24 7 right they like, like they will just be forced to do it they'll right? duplicate that yeah, yeah. i feel like that's yeah. such a leadership leading leadership, by example, leading yeah, by example. so here's um here's a question because i'm not i'm not too uh, you know I, i'm the type of guy where i only invest with people i trust blindly like i don't even ask first right. like how much are we making out of this i said okay well this is your game you know what you're doing here's the money yeah. but um i'm guessing a lot of people don't understand the restaurant business like it it What's the percentages yet? Like, I feel like anybody nowadays just wants to open up a restaurant, but they don't understand the concept of our restaurant. Because, like, an online business is very different than than you know. I, I don't. I technically have staff, but it's just like a personal assistant. It's uh, uh, editors. Yeah. It's, it, like it, these are not. Yeah, but the, I've, I don't meet this because it's, it's, it's on like it's all online. I don't really have employees. Employees that kind of see me on a regular basis in an office yeah in an like office or, and, or a restaurant, or a restaurant yeah. whatever so what's what's the percentage like is it is it 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent? what's the 50 like profit let's yeah profit like okay it, so i'd say this restaurant is like one of the worst businesses yeah. to open unless you are passionate about it yeah like unless the person that's running that restaurant open and invested his money really likes what they're doing because this is if you open a restaurant thinking to make money and you always be chasing money you will never get it mm -hmm. because it's literally the opposite. So I'd say like, and this is becoming a thing. Like I would say, everybody that has like eighty thousand, fifty thousand dollars, yeah, just they want to open up a restaurant. restaurant. That, that, that's that's yeah, what I mean. They think so. it's like that shit, but like they, they quickly realize that what what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like restaurant. If you run it perfectly right and nothing goes wrong, and this is like after so many experiences that I've been through, you don't make more than ten percent of whatever you sell. Mm -hmm. And these that's what people don't get. Like they think like they see a restaurant full. There's like hundreds of people in there they, they would feel like they for some reason don't understand the cost like they would feel like if i pay 300 dollars bill this is all going to the restaurant owner yeah but they don't understand like huh. literally out of the 300 only 30 dollars might go might not yeah if a fridge like stops working or the ac stops exactly. working you will never get that 30 dollars yeah. right but that's but the good thing about restaurants say the cash flow is good you can so, like learn how to use that to your advantage second yeah. thing is I'd say if you make 10% out of three, four different projects, then it's a lot of money. Oh, right. But out of one restaurant, you can never, Do like you, you think it's a decent 10%? Money. I'd say 10% if you believe in reinvesting. Okay. Yeah. Like I'd say you will make at the end of the year, like around 15, 17%, but to run it for a quite long, t longer time, it, it, and it, 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 like you have to invest, like I'd say five to 7%, whether it's in leasehold improvements and to management mm -hmm. and to whatever more assets stuff like that oh, I see. but i'd say 10 percent is the healthy way 10 percent, and just learn how to like make so much sales where 10 percent is pretty good enough and yeah. once you have three four projects like 10 percent of 10 million dollars is, is decent right yeah um but yeah. i see so 10 to 20 is 10 to 20 percent it's pretty yeah. much i got a question for you ferris for the viewers watching that are thinking about you know getting into the restaurant business and we were talking before Don't earlier it. it's not an easy business it's not easy a business in general is not is not necessarily yeah. easy and restaurant you're saying is not easy business give the you know viewers three tips about you know getting into the business the restaurant business nowadays and what kind of challenges they could face so let's say they're passionate they're either a chef yeah. or like a restaurateur that they're really passionate about what they're doing that's the first thing if they're not then i'll tell them go invest in real estate stocks whatever you want to do just get out of the business like even i would rather invest in a convenience store than a restaurant if i don't like it because if you only work in a restaurant because you want to make money, you will hate your life. But I'm working because I love it. Like, I don't give a crap if I make money or not. Like, I'm loving it every single day. So my motivation is not money. So that's how the only way you can make money. Yeah. If you chase it, you will never right. get it. So that's why, like, you never, like, think about, like, oh, I want to drop the quality of something because I want to make more money. That's how restaurants start going down. I agree. You see that. I mean, you're yeah. here in the on the day that it's supposed to be closed yeah, and you're working. Close the, and yeah. it's, it's midnight, by the and way. And he was working alone. Yeah. yeah, and he just finished up. Here's, here's one thing I remember about Ferris. So Ferris is always, like, this is a habit that I've developed over time yeah. from him that I hate, is sleeping on YouTube. Oh Ferris God. is... How do you remember that? I, I don't know. But, bro, hates it too. She hates it. bro, this guy, do you still do it? Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't sleep Bro, on. I swear to God, like, <laughs> the most show he opened was Chef Ramsay. Oh my God! I he have knows every Gordon Ramsay, uh, Gordon Hell's, Ramsay. Ki Hell's Kitchen, Hell's, Hell's, Hell's oh, everything, Kitchen Armor, Hell's yeah, Kitchen, yeah. twenty four hours. Bro, like, <laughs> like <laughs> I've wa I like, I can literally quote like, like if I watch an episode with you, I'll know what they're gonna about. To say. Like, <laughs> I watch every episode like at least ten times, like yeah. that much.
Like it, it was, that. Yeah. This is and this is when we lived together, bro. Like yeah. this is a while. This is pl- five years plus ago. Yeah. And uh, like, so you can tell somebody. Somebody wouldn't watch that, bro, for entertainment. Yeah. Like, he would look at okay, what did the role? Like I feel like he was analyzing as well. Kind of. And <laughs> funny story is like. I used to work with like these two chefs and they were my sous chefs. So every time I would go to work and that one day that I'll be off or like kind of like rude to them or mad or whatever, they're like, oh, this guy just watched Kit and Gordon Ramsay is trying to be here. <laughs> and I hate it. I'm like, like they always think like, whatever I'm mad, I'm just trying to copy Gordon Ramsay. Uh, and, it's and Gordon Ramsay <laughs> keeps, keeps cussing these people. Yeah, <laughs> keeps but, cussing these people. But you're but fucking what? twat. But oh it's, entertaining. it's entertaining. It's even, entertaining. Even, even if you don't, you're not into cooking, it's entertaining as hell. Like, He's I rude, bro. Yeah. He gets people to quit cooking. Like, F this, bro. I, I don't like, cook sometimes, anymore. like, you wish you can as like be as blunt as him, but you you can't obviously tough, you can't yeah. be like that. But do you, do you feel that you need to be strict, stern? Because as, 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 as a head chef, man. as a leader in the in the kitchen, what kind of qualities do you need? Okay, that's a problem. Like that's why like I would kind of enter indirectly. Like whenever you study culinary school, and a lot of like let's say ninety percent of the students that go to culinary school without having an experience in a restaurant, they end up taking a degree for two years to go work in a restaurant, and then they quit after a week. They switch their majors, mm-hmm. right? Because working as a restaurant, like 90% of it, you're not doing anything fancy. And mm-hmm. that's what people don't get. Like, it's not like the way you see it on TV. It's like, you're cleaning hoods, you're dishwashing, you're like doing food. Like, it's 90% like of the time just cleaning after everything. 10% cooking, 10% using your brain. The rest is like physical. So I'd say it's not more than being strict, more than having a system. Mm-hmm. So once you like, you have a system that's easier and more efficient to follow, you don't, you won't have to be as strict as you should be to force people to like follow it because it's just much easier to follow the system than not not to follow it so they'll end up following it anyways without you having to be that strict but service time is different like let's say once you see that like okay the restaurant is busy the dinner service started then yeah the head chef becomes like nobody becomes can talk, uh, yeah. like yeah he becomes an animal like mm-hmm. that's it like nobody can say anything and just because you want everybody to be focused and that's it but after service you go back to just being you pressure uh, time exactly we're, we're talking about the three tips that you would give. Oh, yeah. You know, so you're, you're talking thing, about be, being passionate. You, got, you, you yeah. can't chase the money. you got to be passionate about yeah. it. Second thing is, again, like I think we said it like a little bit ago, is uh, worry about how to increase your sales, yeah. not decreasing your cost, because uh, yeah. you'll never be able to catch up after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, third thing I would say about restaurants is, understand the worst case scenario don't be too optimistic or oblivious about it like mm. you're working at the end of the day for 10 15 percent you have to be okay with it you have to be satisfied then you will have to adapt to a way to be able to scale that money without squeezing it from the same project you know what i mean don't squeeze something more than it should be uh, because okay. it will just end up falling right like don't this is how much you like gotta yeah. yeah this is what you're supposed to do be happy with it if you're not happy with it figure out a way to increase it or to open another project or that makes, whatever. That makes sense. Yeah. I agree. I'd say these are the few tips. Cool. Well, I feel like uh, we've covered a lot today about the restaurant business. Do you have anything else yeah. glad to say? No, I like that. I like how you you know you guys came together after being separated for a little bit. You yeah. Rakan went into his on the online space. Online business. But we never, yeah. we never lost touch. We never. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You're we're like me. silently work, like yeah. it's a weird way to say, like, like this is how it worked. Like we moved out. Like we lived here yeah. together for like what five years. Five years together. And Left. he yeah. started doing his own thing, and I started doing. It. We went both different ways. Yeah. We're not even communicating it. Like you know, we just like literally. I started doing my own thing. Yeah. He started doing his own thing, and then we'll just meet at every milestone. Yeah. I yeah. Guess. But I think that's real literally. friendship. You don't yeah. have to be texting and calling no, every no, single no, day. Exactly. Like, you guys are working on 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 what you're working on, but you know you come to a common ground like you are right now you know yeah. i agree man and, and just building a better life for for, for the both of you guys yeah you know? well i feel like we, we we've covered a lot today my brother fares thank you so much on thank being the host it. by the way like we can we kind of said this um t- like we he you've been working since morning today so yeah, this like is like literally after a shift. Yeah, this is after, <laughs> after like a long, long after a long after after after, wear, <laughs> like after, a, after, yeah. after dark. So yeah. we appreciate you for spending the time with us, my brother Vlad. Thank you for co-hosting. You my friends, my family. Uh, make sure, dude, if if anybody in the restaurant business absolutely should be watching this. Uh, make sure y'all subscribing, you guys are liking, you guys are dropping your comments. 
Um, I think uh, three three restaurants we should we should we should mention. You guys should try out Ecstatic for brunch, uh, um, back smoke backyard smokehouse smoke for for smoking, and then if you're a, a shisha guy for Arabic food, Petra. you know it's Petra for it's sure. Place. For sure is the place. So uh, make sure y'all we're, we're gonna put it somewhere right here. We're gonna put the links in, in in the description. So make sure you guys you know kind of visit us. You guys are more than welcome. And uh, again, thank you, boys. And we will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.